ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Today's lesson we're doing Alhamdulillah we're still doing Arabic you know we're doing Arabic so this is lesson 16, right? And say, Adarsu Sittashir. Darsu? Sittatu Ashara. Okay, now, there's a few things that we can do here. What we want to make sure is that everybody is understanding what's going on, right? So, just to ask you guys a question. What is it that we're studying? What are we studying? In this particular lesson here? Right. How is this lesson broken down? We're doing um, Arabic language. We're doing Arabic language. What do you mean by Arabic language? Um, the science of Arabic. The what? The makeup of the Arabic language. The makeup of the Arabic language. So we have the Arabic language here, okay? What break up the make show me the breakup of the Arabic language. Hold, we, we start off with the different types of uh, no what's the first thing we did no that's not how we do it the first thing you have to do is define you have to define the word Arabic okay so we put down the linguistic meaning right yes and then we put down what what do we put the technical or the terminology we call it the nomenclature the, the, the proper term would be the nomenclature so what is the linguistic meaning of the word Arabic or Araba? To make clear. To make something clear. That means to mean, need no doubt about a sentiment or a statement or emotion. What is the term, as a terminology, what is it? What does the word Araba mean? See, you have to, what, what's that? Laysa al Banati, la la. What does it mean? The ter, as a terminology, it is a language. It's a language that points to the people who are known as Arabs. Very simple. There's nothing complicated with that. That's what the, the word Araba is in reference to. It's a reference to the people. We say it, languages, we see, first we told our Arab, then we say language. Languages are many, but they have the same objective. What's the objective with language? To express one's emotion. To express what you have as a need, to express yourself and be understood, right? Hey, no, bati hadha lil umayyu, no sumahat. Wa eskihim, no sumahatim. So, it's to express your agrad. Now, why are we, next thing we have to do is what? Why are we studying this? No, not just to learn the language. Okay, to learn the language, but why? Actually, we learned our Islam. Okay, so we stop here and we say, okay, the language here as a terminology is that, I missed a point. We explain what has preserved the language. The Quran. the Quran has preserved it, right, first and foremost. What next? The authentic hadith, right? And then what else? The poetry of the Arabs of the past. And, th and that's it. These are the three. So then these become the three proofs. The three proofs in Arabic language. And we'll say poetry of Jahiliya for the most part. Okay? Excuse me? You had a, I may be wrong, but you had, you may have, you had mentioned um, educated four, writers. The, right, the educated people amongst the Arabs. I said for the most part, the people of Jahiliya. Okay? For the most part. Not, this is not Kuliyan, but this is just generally. Then we say, we state here, why, how many sciences are there in Arabic? Before we get, how many? There are 13 different Sciences, right? What are the most important two? Sarf, Nahu, and Sarf. We say Nahu, and we say Sarf. Sarf. These are the most important two. Now, I get back to my why. Why are we studying this? Now we know about Arabic language. Just, that's the Arabic language, okay? Now, why are we about to endorse a study on this, this language that means to make something perfectly clear, not to leave, any, uh, to leave no doubt about a sentiment. 
This is their language of a people known as the Arabs that lived in a particular place in the world, right? Um, it's been preserved by this Quran, these ahadith, and this poetry, most, for the most part of Jahiliyyah. There's 13 different sciences of this, this thing we're talking about. The most important two are nahu wa sarf. Even if we do, don't define these two at this stage, why are we doing this? Why is it important that we understand this language? Right, so now, because this first thing, this Quran, this second thing, these ahadith, those two things have a very important role in our life. What role is that? The role is, for sake of time, is that these are the two judges through which we, we, we negotiate the life. These are the, the tools, these two things, this Quran and those authentic hadith and those athar, those under, under understanding of the Prophet's companions, radiallahu anhum, these are the ones that we're going to be using to define how we should interact with this dunya. Right? So we can't base it on, because, uh, you know, we, we're not going to just listen to anybody. We have to know. Right? So for that reason, the reason of being able to what? Understand what? The speech of Allah. And the guidance of who? Of his Prophet Muhammad. Okay? So. This is what we want to, this is why we're studying this. Okay, we're going through that. Somebody get the, 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 the tissues and everything because we're, we're going to erase the board afterwards. Now, I'm hanging up for you. You got the tissues, somebody? After saying this, now we go back to Nahu Wasaf. What does Nahu mean? Somebody explain to me the word Nahu. Grammar. Yeah. Grammar. That's in a word. Linguistically, that's not the meaning. We don't do it this way. Remember, there's a minhad. There's a methodology through study. I mean, to study. Okay. The methodology is first that we state what? Come on, people. What's the first thing we state? The linguistic. When dealing with a word, the first thing we deal with is the linguistic meaning. La la binti jilisi. Um kuthu? Nah, inshallah. Now, oh, we got some tissues over here. Ta'atini. Sugar. Yeah, it should be. I don't know. Where are the other ones at? Downstairs? They're folk. Hey, da 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 so, we don't go with the, the, ling, the, the, the terminology first. The first definition we give is the linguistic. Okay? Because remember, we are Muslims. So as we study, we're not just studying the subject. We're not just studying the subject. We're also studying the minhaj, the methodology of studying. We're picking up Little fruits here and there all throughout the whole course of study. And this usually, and the adab, we, we pick up the akhlaq. We learn from those different things that the, the teachers and the scholars keep as an as a, as a, a, a important part. And we start to notice these things. Okay? These are the three things we're learning. Okay? Now, we're only using the subject to learn these other two types of things. Now, the first thing we have to understand is when we're defining a word, the first thing we do is the linguistic meaning. The second thing we do is the as a terminology, right? So what linguistically does Nahu mean? It's the study of a word. No, I said linguistically, sir. Linguistically, what does Nahu mean? The study of grammar. No, it's not, it does not mean that. Linguistically, that as linguistically, Nahu means, nah, I'm tafadali. Nahu means to face a certain direction. It also means intention. It also means mithla, similar to. Zaydun, Nahu, Amrun. Right? Zayd is like Amrun. Like right, like or similar to. Jiha, direction. It also means to intend. Ana, Nahu, or Qast, to go someplace. It means, this is what this word Nahu means. Now, as a terminology, as a terminology, it is in a word, grammar. In a word, it is? Grammar. Come on, guys, speak up. Grammar. grammar. Now, what is grammar according to the Muslims and the Arabs? 
ايوه شكرا جزيلا ها ايوه فكر اجلس